Hello guys and welcome to another David Samolata. In today's video we're going to be talking about EGR and EGR specific problem because yes EGR is the culprit of many 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 sprinter problems and a lot of times it may seem like it's a turbo and it's really not it's just an EGR and it can lead you to spend a lot of money in parts in labor that have nothing to do with the actual problem that you're actually facing all because you're a little bit stubborn and you might not think that EGR can be the problem at that moment. Please go ahead and actually hit that like button right now and subscribe to my channel because I am the only guy here on YouTube that is trying to help all the sprinter owners around the world. There's probably nobody else that actually wants to help just like I do. You know, at least I really don't know of that, at least on this type of scale that I'm actually doing it on because I am actually trying to help on my channel and Sometimes I myself will say to uh, a sprinter owner that really comes and visits me and asks me for some questions and um, you know they're like oh I think it's in a GR but I'm like okay how did you uh, think it's gonna be in a GR because you know it's not always in a GR and uh, this is why I am kind of like against always saying oh uh, it's not polling oh it's bad oh it's a GR no uh, it may be your turbo but there's ways of actually uh, finding out to be exact and to be sure okay so in this video i'm going to give you one simple tip to eliminate the egr problem for what is that like one dollar five dollars okay something like that so i'm going to give you a link to a resistor that you could actually buy and you could actually like let's say like you're having like an egr problem and you're like well, i don't really don't want to spend this 500 dollars is there a way for me to actually figure out like is this my egr so this little thing will actually help you uh, figure this problem out like for $5 and not only that, you could actually delete your jar for $5. Well, more like bypass it, I call it hacking, but uh, could be considered hacking the jar. But this actually will only work on a T1N Sprinter, so if you got like a 2007 and up, I don't know how to help you. Uh, not yet anyways, I'm pretty sure I'm going to figure out in the future. but. Of course, with this little thing, you're gonna be really specific how to really install it, and this video is coming, and I already have that kind of video, but I'm gonna do a video myself, how to actually install it, and um, and really help you there, you know, and of course, I'm gonna provide a link to that, but this is not what the video is about. I just wanna tell you that th this is a way that you could actually save money by actually plugging that in. I will, however, explain how that kind of works. Uh, I will try to do it in this video. But anyways, let's continue. Um, so. Let's say you have this issue, um, you know, your sprinter was always driving good and lively and you could really tell like on the road, it's really performing, you know, really well, you know, it's like, it's accelerating normal, you know, the smoke, you might have a little bit of smoke in the back, not too much, but overall, it's performing pretty good and uh, and then one day you kind of discover you're like hey you know what it feels a little bit more sluggish yes it accelerates about 60 miles an hour and I'm not stuck in any kind of lip mode I'm not getting no EGR codes what could this problem be it just doesn't feel right like my sprinter doesn't feel like its old self before so what can this really be is this my EGR is this maybe like my intake manifold is this my air filter, maybe mass airflow sensor, O2 sensor, and you stop hopping around, maybe turbo, and uh, maybe turbo actually is not performing the way it is, and your sprinter feels kind of sluggish, you know? If you have that case, now there's several ways that you could actually figure this out, but in this video we're gonna focus on the EGR, but I will bring into the topic the turbo a little bit just to make a little bit more sense. I think it's going to be important to really set the two apart and how they are different and hopefully you can understand this problem a little bit more. Now, a lot of times sprinters throw a curveball and it's really difficult to understand like what the heck they're doing. And even like when you ask a question, I mean, unless I tested it myself, or you provide me enough information because it needs to be really, really detailed because it's really important. Every little thing is important. Every little sound is really important to me. It's important to me how it's accelerating. It's important to know uh, where does the RPM uh, gauge go and how fast it accelerates? Can it accelerate beyond 60 miles an hour? What's it really doing? Uh, if you're just staying in one spot and you're revving your uh, you know, RPMs, are they going above 3,000 or the under 3,000? So these things are really, really important. And of course you have to tell me if it's sluggish. And there's other couple ways of testing it. Like when you're actually driving a Sprinter, let's say like you're driving it on the road, sometimes you could actually hit the key off and on. And what it does is kind of like it resets things. Um, don't hit it like, you know, like more than one notch. Just enough to like cut the engine off while you're driving. Of course, be safe. Make sure it's a straight road. And, um, you know, 
I guess as a, as a warning, you know, don't do this at home, right? Or, you know, whatever they say. Uh, just, you know, be cautious and be mindful. I mean, you're an adult, right? I mean, you know, like, you know, like, if you turn the key too much off, you're going to lock your steering wheel up and you're not going to be able to churn, you know? So, you know, be sure of that. And, uh, of course, you know, even though this never happened to me and you might be able to turn your engine off and never, you know, start it back up again for whatever reason. Maybe your engine just failed at that moment. So don't, tell, don't think uh, this is <laughs> on me, okay? But I am here to help you. That's actually what I'm here to, to do. And I'm not here to make money on you and I'm, and I'm not here to sell you anything. I just want to tell you how you could actually figure this problem out on your own, okay? So, I always like to tell a story, okay, how this happened. So, recently, uh, I had one of my viewers that came here to uh, to to my to my home, and he had this issue, and uh, he was really sure that it was a turbo issue, okay? So, sometimes you have a, a, a viewer that's a do-it-yourselfer, and they are sure that that's actually what's going on. Of course, I I've taken a look at it, I've driven it. And off camera, I said, listen, I think it's your EGR because the way it's performing. Um, and of course, uh, he said, no, 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 it's not EGR. I just recently replaced it. No, it's not EGR. I, I think it's the turbo. I just replaced the turbo. It's a new turbo. Then I replaced the actuator and then I replaced it again. And this is what it's doing. I'm like, okay. I mean, you know, <laughs> you know you're the boss. So, uh, you know, we did uh, a couple things. Um, first of all, we did uh, delete his EGR using uh, the, the, the actual, you know, resistor. That actually helped the problem out a little bit, okay? It did not solve the problem, and here's why. Because his EGR was actually stuck. Now, EGR sometimes what happens is they open up and they close up. They open up and they close up. You probably, if you've taken one apart before, uh, you know that there's like a sort of like a metal fan and because of the carbon buildup in there Sometimes they have a hard time opening or closing, but usually it's not because it's a carbon buildup I mean, that's kind of like one of the causes of the problem Usually what happens is if you've been trying to like remove it and you've been tapping on it with a hammer You know, you really mess up the spring uh, thing in there and now this might not be even your fault so don't think this is your fault. You can mess it up, yes, with a hammer. So you want to be careful. Don't hit it with a hammer. You have to make sure when you install it, okay, uh, put some anti-seize lubricant on the actual body of the um, EGR that it inserts into the hole because even though it's aluminum and aluminum and there's no oxidation that technically happens, uh, this will save you a bunch of headache, um, you know, trying to remove it again, okay? So it is really important that you do that. But if you don't do that, the jar is gonna be very, very stuck and uh, it's stuck due to the carbon buildup that's in there and possibly some other things. And uh, it's really annoying to remove it. And a lot of times you could end up breaking your EGR. And you know, if you're in that type of situation that your EGR is not working, okay, uh, replace, actually uh, using this uh, method to bypass the EGR with the resistor, a lot of times will save your issue, but it's not a 100% fix. Why am I saying not 100% fixed? Because let's say your EGR, it just malfunctioned, it stopped working. Now, if it stopped working altogether and it's in closed position, you're golden. As long as it's in a closed position, it's just not opening up, fine, no problem. Take the the, uh, the actual, uh, re actual resistor, do uh, what we did in the, in the video with Rua. He was actually over my house. He's the one, I'm gonna say, inventor of the system uh he actually was visiting he showed me how to do it uh hands on even though i've seen it on his channel but it's really nice to meet other do-it-yourselfers uh that actually like to help people as well and he's one of them so i really appreciate that he showed me that method and i'm sharing that with you guys and of course all for free we could have just said you know what we're doing EGR upgrades here come over we're gonna upgrade you for like 100 bucks right so i could do that for you i can but it's not my goal my goal is to give you a five dollar resistor you do it yourself in five minutes or under and that's it you're golden okay so anyways here's the thing if the EGR is in closed position uh, there's no air that's basically escaping and stuff like that I'm just gonna explain in childish terms so you know so um, you know and then you put a resistor it just bypasses the whole thing it just tricks the computer and everything's like you know closed so everything it seems like it's working properly to the computer and that's the easy you know baby way that I could actually explain it and uh, your computer's happy no check engine light is on, no EGR code is on, everything's gonna be just working smoothly, you know, and you could just go ahead and drive your sprinter, it's gonna accelerate good. You're no longer going to have all those um, 
exhaust and emissions going into your engine, making your engine oil dirtier and more sludgier and stuff like that. Overall, it's gonna eliminate a lot of problems. Of course, in uh, in the summertime, you know, EGR having to open up, right? And uh, letting all the carbon back in to the, you know, like and recirculate back into the engine kind of sucks because uh, what happens is not only that it makes your uh, engine uh, oil dirty, but it also heats up your engine a little bit more. So if you notice in the summertime, your engine is heating up a little bit more than in the winter time. And that's because, well, you, you know, <laughs> there's there's like two causes. First of all, you might have a, a summer thermostat or a winter thermostat. So that causes it as well. But EGR helps keep your engine warmer during the winter. Uh, but in the summertime, you really don't want it to keep it actually warm. You want it to be a little bit more cooler. And Sprinter engines, like a T1 engine, it's actually really easy to overheat. And if you overheat them, things they just fall apart on the inside. You know, all the you know, uh, it, uh, man, what is this word that I'm looking for? Uh, pistons. They'll just shatter. They'll just shatter all over the engine. I've seen this firsthand on uh, taking apart an uh, engine where it's been overheated and uh, all the uh, pistons shattered shattered you know so it was completely no good i went to just stuck so you have to replace an engine um so it would be kind of nice if you could in the summertime go ahead and actually you know kind of like bypass the agr keep it from opening not only in the summer but uh, you know like winter as well overall it's gonna keep your engine alive longer because it's keeping those um emissions no emission exhaust fumes from entering your engine Dirtying up your oil because one of the leading causes of sprinter just going dead the engines locking up was because dirty oil people don't Replace oil they neglect it for time and time again And before you know it the engine locks up and they don't change it on time and I'm pretty sure you guys done it I've done it too uh, It's not that it's a bad thing because sometimes you know, we're expediting we, we, we know we could do an oil change every 10,000 It is one thing if you have full synthetic uh, full, you know oil in there um, I've seen people that don't use full synthetic. They're trying to save money. If you don't have full synthetic, man, you got to replace it a lot sooner than that. And I know, I know, you know, it might seem like companies made it up back in the day. The oil companies have to replace every 3,000 miles, right? So they could sell you more oil. I know it. There's a, there's a thing like that that's going around. But synthetics, of course, you don't have to replace them as often. But if your oil is getting really dirty due to all this uh, carbon buildup, you know, that's from the smoke exhaust and it's entering your engine, I mean, that's not good. That is not good. I mean, if you'll be, uh, you know, taking your engine apart and you would probably not put it together with uh, even like some dust on, a, on, you know, like in a piston because you were gonna like wipe everything down, make sure everything's clean. It's like a, it's like a hospital environment or like a, a science, you know, lab, or like a, where the rocket scientists are building stuff and they're wearing their white outfits and make sure there's no dust that enters there, you know, because dust, I mean, <laughs> it might not be a big deal, but in space it is, you know, so, so here, that being said, it seemed like we went a little bit too far, but I think it's important. You have to kind of like retrace all the steps, like where's all this going, you know, but so ultimately EGR is just not good to have on your vehicle. And there's some channels that really explain it detail, but you know what? I want to explain to the common person. I'm not really talking to a mechanic here. If I am, sorry, uh, you're not probably going to like me because uh, I am trying to keep you, you know, people out of your shop. You know, and because uh, it's expensive, it's expensive to be uh, in, uh, in shops and uh, you can't really make any money that way. Um, so to the regular common person like myself, do it yourself and that is willing to work on his own sprinter so you can save money. I am for that type of person. So, so anyways, let's get back to the EGR, okay? And, and solving it's a little problem. And I really did not imagine this video is gonna go for 13 minutes. Wow, uh, I really can't keep this short, can I? Um, but anyways, so the problem that we had with my uh, my friend here coming over that watches my YouTube channel was actually that it was not turbo related. It was the EGR. Here's what was going on with his EGR. His EGR was closed, but slightly open. So this little fan on the EGR, so like when it actually turns and then it closes, um, it basically sometimes uh, due to the it's not necessarily the spring. There's a plastic piece that helps it from stopping. I actually, in one of my videos, taken an EGR apart, and that plastic piece, I guess, melted due to all the carbon, uh, you know, emissions. And uh, this is was like something that I was trying to tell you. You can kind of like break it with a hammer and get that piece loose, but uh, because it is plastic. And if you look at the EGR in that video that I've taken apart, which I will hope I'll link down below. You know, sometimes I'm pretty late on doing that, but. 
I'm gonna try to stick a link down there. I've taken it apart and it is very, very apparent that uh, emissions, all this exhaust, uh, with heat and everything, I guess because the metal is uh, expanding at that moment, uh, when he, or, you know, when he, is it expanding or is it shrinking? Doesn't matter. Who cares about the science of it? But right, but uh, the all the exhaust it makes it all the way to the electronics, like through the whole thing. So it goes beyond where it needs to really be, and this really causes your electronics to go out of whack on HR. This is why you have to replace it. This causes the actual thing that opens up uh, and closes to go out of whack because the piece that prevents it from uh go you know not going enough or going a little bit well it's like, actually it goes a little bit beyond this is why it leaves a little corner <clears throat> excuse me i need some water in here so it, it keep like a little corner of the EGR, like an each little piece is going to be open so that little tiny tiny piece you might see like with my fingers here like 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 that that little opening on each fan is actually going to cause your your engine to just not perform good. So you're gonna be driving and it's just sluggish. It's like you would not really think this is gonna be the cause. Like your EGR electronics working fine, so it's not throwing any codes. Yet you are sluggish, and that's because EGR is slightly open. So some of the emissions enter your engine and it's causing things out of whack. So you know it's not really performing the correct way and. Uh, you know, one of the ways to fix it is go ahead and stick a new HR in there because you're really not going to solve it any, any other way unless you um, <laughs> do some crazy stuff like JB while well, those fans are there closed. I mean, you can do that. I mean, if you are thinking about replacing the HR anyways and you're trying to go ahead and bypass it and just get rid of it altogether, right? So then you could just, you know, take some GB well, uh, <laughs> JP weld and just weld those holes shut because, I mean, I really don't think they sell the plastic parts that goes on inside of the HR that helps you the fans from going a little bit too far because the spring is pushing on them like it wants to push and close further than it really needs to go but because that plastic piece is not there on the inside it makes it all fall apart but guys don't you think it's like they engineered this stuff to fail it's like come on now so i mean <laughs> can they blame us for trying to figure out a way to bypass them so we don't have to buy them in the first place I mean, if they really wanted us to have good EGRs, they would have made them good or at least made it more affordable because at $500 per EGR, not an affordable price. So a $5 resistor sounds like my kind of fix. Uh, maybe it can be $10, I don't know. I'm gonna link it down below and show you guys exactly how to do it like in one of my videos. But that's not a video that's about it. I just wanna kinda slightly explain it because here's here's why. We did this uh, resistor you know, replacement for this EGR that was slightly open and guess what? It kinda worked, uh, but it did not solve the issue. Uh, it made the EGR not be seen uh, to the computer and it was performing fine, we didn't get any code, so that was a success. It actually drove fine, accelerated kind of fine, but it was like still just a little bit, you know, tiny bit sluggish. I think most of you probably not even noticed it because the Sprinter usually has a lot more sluggish than that, but you know, he's a Sprinter owner, he takes care of his Sprinter, he knows and understands how his Sprinter is supposed to be behaving. And that's not the way it's supposed to behave, especially with the type of miles he's had on there. So. That is like one of those issues and you know it's important to really understand like what's going on. So I guess another thing that I want to say uh, and this is a, kind of like a tip that's all going together part of this video and I'm sorry that it's really long but you know what I've tried cutting out and making my videos a lot shorter. It takes up it takes up all my character out of the whole video and then it's just not me. It's not me anymore. So I'm more of the person that will make a book for dummies and I won't call you dummies of course but I will tell you the intricate details and exactly how you understand it instead of speaking in a mechanic knowledge and tone and leave your question in your whole existence <laughs> and why did you buy the sprinter because it's gonna cost you I'm gonna like to fix it and you should be getting rid of it and selling it to that guy probably for 1500 bucks you know and then you're just not gonna have a sprinter and just go buy yourself a, a new one you know so I'm not that kind of person I am here to help you so that you could keep your sprinter running for longer because these T1s they're good you know and it's important but anyways let's go ahead and get down to the nitty-gritty okay I want to keep this thing under 20 minutes if we can so EGR just got three bolts okay if it's if you haven't sluggish performance simply remove the three bolts pull the EGR out and take a look at your fans take a look at your fan blades while you had to go ahead and clean everything up so if you see like a little corner pieces that's sticking out that you know that it just goes a little bit too far. I mean, you might you might like you know twist it with a screwdriver. Maybe it's loose enough to you where you could do it with your hands. Take your fans and you could like spin them and try it many times because sometimes maybe it goes good, sometimes it goes too far. So it just when it goes a little bit too far, you're gonna have three triangles that's opened up a little bit, really tiny triangles on each side. 
that is enough to cause the whole system to be out of whack. I am so serious. So, uh, basically, because uh, this viewer and, uh, you know, do-it-yourself did not listen to my recommendation of me taking it off his HR because, yes, of course, I would charge for labor. I mean, that's my time, right? Um, that's out of the question. And, uh, and uh, he did not listen to my recommendation. We could have simply pulled it off. I would have saved him so much money and headache. Uh, without buying the extra stuff he was buying and visiting other shops as well, I could have just told him, your EGR is bad. I don't need a computer to tell me that. As a matter of fact, computer normally does not even catch that issue. And he was going to this expensive type of shop and they had this expensive, you know, $15,000 computer. They look at it and stuff like that. And uh, many times he went there, they really didn't do nothing. And uh, they keep pointing to the EGR, they delete the codes. It works for a little bit and it doesn't. So same thing was happening to me. I could see the codes, they were old in there. I deleted them, then they work, and then it was not working again. So it's it's kind of like that. So um, he was really happy to call me and say, you know, hey, my sprinter is working now. It's great, I'm so happy now. I'm like, what was the fix? He says EGR, I'm like, told you, it's EGR. You know, I'm not gonna like pressure you into getting an EGR or whatever, but I think, Listen, pull it off, take a look at it. If it looks, you know, like the corners are off, you know, okay, well, you have a problem. So you have two choices. Replace the AGR or go ahead and actually bypass it. But before you bypass it, you're going to need to make sure those those holes are shut. So maybe you could twist the fan back and maybe you could just slightly, uh, you know, weld it somehow, maybe with something temporary that you could maybe then remove. But I mean, if it's bad, it's anyways. I mean, who cares? Well, weld that sucker up, you know, and just, you know, just use it because it's kind of looked like you have an EGR there, yet it's not there because it's just a thing that keeps the hole covered, but it looks all good, you know? So maybe you have a state that has inspection. No problem. Buy an EGR that works or leave that EGR there like it is. Go ahead and actually plug, you know, remove the resistor. It just takes a minute. Plug it back up. Problem solved. You can go ahead and actually pass your inspection. That's kind of no issue. Uh, fortunately for us, <laughs> the AGR is the only thing we will have to work worry about on the T1Ns. And uh, there is really nothing else to worry about, like uh, as far as the emission goes. We don't have no PDF. We don't have no uh, DF. Yes, we do have catalytic converters. Go figure. But if you get rid of them, if it's legal in your state, like if you don't have no, no inspection, well then you could just, you know, you know, you're not gonna have any cats and you're gonna be completely fine. And it's not gonna be that loud, um, you know, even if you remove the muffler. I've tried all of these things uh, by just straight piping the whole sprinter. I mean, they're not loud to begin with. So when you do that, it is completely, completely fine. But it looks like we went over the 20 minutes mark, but you know, I think there's a lot of good relevant information here. And this is what my channel is about, guys. It's about just, being insightful and detailed and to just help you understand this problem a little bit and i hope you understood yes i could have explained it a little bit better but man this is the way i think this is the way i explain stuff and hopefully i gave you guys enough details i know there's like not enough back and forth details but guys i have so many videos on that like when you're test driving uh the sprinter with the jar off and on and turbo off and on and all those other things there is a lot of that and uh, just watch some of those guys. I give some really good information. I'm one of the few people, probably the only one that really cares about you uh, and your sprinter repair because I am not motivated by money. I don't need your money um, and I don't need you to get the sprinter into me so I could fix it. Sure, you know, when somebody comes over here, I charge like, you know, like uh, 50 bucks to do like a diagnostics. I plug it in, I give some advice. But that's not my point. I really don't really even want to do that. You know, I just want to share the knowledge with you. And that's it. Live my life happy and you live your life happy and we're all happy. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe. Don't forget to hit the like button, please. And uh, in order to show you support for the channel, at least watch my videos to the end. Maybe just go away somewhere and uh, just make some coffee and let, let it play all the way through. It's going to help me out, you know. So anyways, take care of yourself. God bless you. And see you guys in my next video. Bye-bye. My name is Serge Zamaleta. I'm 37 years old. And yes, I experienced success after buying my first home for cash. Back in 2011, I was broke. But I learned to solve problems on my own. Now, I'm helping others to solve their problems. I know what pitfalls to avoid to stay profitable in business. Need motivation to be more successful in your life? Do you have Sprinter Expedite or business problems? Then subscribe. Let's find creative solutions to your problems. Hit the bell notification so you don't miss any of my helpful videos.